Okay, so Euro cylinders, I just want to talk a bit about Euro cylinders and um, locks on doors and stuff in a commercial setting. And um, from my experience, what I've seen that is kind of stupid and what's kind of smart and practical for Euro, the use of Euro cylinders. So, Euro cylinder. It's called a Euro cylinder because it has a profile that looks like this. Okay, so it has that shape to it. Okay, it gets its name from that. It's the Euro profile cylinder. And they look, they come in different classes and stuff high security and standard. This one's just a, a dumb double rows of pins there. It's a higher security one. So, the cylinder would look something like this. Now, there are three, I think it's just three types of um, cylinder. First, you get a single Euro cylinder or half Euro. And a half Euro cylinder would be some, look something like this, except it would also have the cam, the cam part on there. Um, I should probably just show you what the what I mean. And again, I'll take a another lock that's I haven't picked it before. Here's a a lock here. Now you can see when I turn the key, this is the cam here. This part that moves that just opens and closes the lo the, the the lock, actuates it. So a single sided or a half euro only has this part here. Sometimes it has the little screw, but you'd see those used and installed in little boxes on the outside of roller shutters. And um, you'd have half euro in there to operate the lock. Another possible place you would see a half euro is inside of a padlock that is I don't know we could see it uses a a key that you can use on the doors of a building and the doors of the padlock as well but you'd have a padlock with a half euro in it and you could be it could be master keyed and then you have the uh, Euro like this. This one is double key, so you have a key on the inside and you have the key on the outside. So if there's a window next to the lock and someone smashes the window, they can't just put their hand through and unlock the lock. So in that application, if this, especially if there's a window, um, you want to have one of these locks because it has it's locked from the inside and the outside. Then you have the full Euro cylinder like this one, except on the inside there's a thumb turn. Okay, and the thumb turn, it has its pros and its cons. The pro is that you don't have to worry about having a key to um, use it in case of an emergency. If there's a fire door and you want to have one of those on the fire door to help secure it with a lock, you can have a thumb turn that's always on there so the door can stay locked. And if there's a fire, you don't have to rush around looking for a key or even break a stupid key box to get a outside the door there. The break glass key box, you don't have to break one of those. You can literally just unlock it and unlock the door. Um, one of the flaws in the design, which could be on purpose because it's meant for internal use primarily for fire safety but one of the pros or cons depending on what the application is is that a lot of the thumb turns can be bypassed but because they're spring-loaded the cams are spring-loaded and often they can be moved with a, with a tool for bypassing the mechanism on the one side and then just yeah actuating the thumb turn part um so yeah that's uh those are the three types of um 
euro or sorry four types of euros so <sighs> what else um, there is I think there is another type um, as well I'm not 100% sure about this one but I think you literally get a half euro that's just a thumb turn part and that's for and on the outside of the door there's no keyhole or anything and that you can just literally lock with the thumb turn on the inside now I don't know if that's a thing or not I'm, I think I've seen something like that before though anyway so let's first cover I want to cover the thumb turns because there's a, a lot of people are like oh thumb turns are crap why do they even have that even myself wondering why do they, people use thumb turns well I think there's a right and a wrong use for thumb turn locks now let's start with the wrong application for using a thumb turn so if you have a thumb turn euro cylinder and you put it on your front or back door and rely on that solely to secure your home it's a bit of a stupid idea in terms of security because there is that risk that the lock can be bypassed and open now you could just you could have it on there if you're concerned about fire sa you know fire safety fair enough and you want to just unlock the door quickly and not look in a smoke look around a smoke filled room for a key but uh it's a it's a bit of a trade off really you, know, you don't really like you could put a you could leave a key in the euro cylinder but um i'm not 100% sure if that's very secure uh, if if it's on a, a solid door maybe if you left the key inside the lock on a solid door with no window that's easy to access the key um, from so if there was a window next to the lock probably not a good idea to leave a key in the in the lock but if it was no window or whatever maybe you could do that now I don't know could the person bump the lock or if it was picked or whatever can they actuate it or whatever I don't know I'd rather personally I'd rather have the uh, key leave a key in the hero cylinder than um, have a thumb turn but anyway that's just my preference now another use the right uses let's just do the right uses for um, thumb turn euro cylinders the correct uses would be on an internal door to in on an office or a storage room or something in case someone got locked in a storage room they can let themselves out and if it's inside of an office or something, um, they can lock the door from inside. If there's a fire, they don't have to worry about looking for keys. If it's the wrong person in the in the wrong room and they don't have a key for the door, they just need to unlock the thumb turn. Nobody has to worry about keys. But uh, yeah, if you are going to use a thumb turn, now here's where thumb turns have their positive benefits um, if you were say on a in an in a shop okay we'll say a shop and you're the store manager you have one euro cylinder that locks with a key you have one euro cylinder above it or below it that locks with the thumb turn on one side and a key on the other side the pros of having one one with a key that can stay unlocked during the day and then one that has a thumb turn is that they can see you you can close the shop um, you can lock the door and quickly if you say there's a a person that you don't want to come into your shop or you having trouble or you want to quickly close the shop or whatever any staff member can do it they just have to turn the thumb turn and lock the door they don't have to fumble around looking for keys and uh, worry about having to you know in an emergency or something they don't have to worry about that okay um, also if you're say you're locking up your, your office or whatever your shop if you have a thumb turn you can 
don't have to wait if there's a key holder that locks up your building you don't have to wait for them to lock the door in order to restrict access you can have uh, someone close it with the thumb turn and if there's still a customer in and there's not someone to attend the door to let them out the customer can just open the thumb turn and let themselves out and then the you know it's 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 got its pros and its cons um and i think another but as long as you could use it on a on a you know external door as long as you have a you also have one with um the key option as well on the same door and then another thing to bear in mind is a lot of commercial buildings and offices and stuff they don't these days at least they don't rely solely on a keyed lock anymore to um, keep an intruder out so if you have a mag lock on your door as well so that means you ha you can un you can have a thumb turn euro cylinder to lock the door fair enough but uh, you can also have, if you have a mag lock on the door, yeah, the door has to be unlocked for one, and then for access, people have to have a swipe card. So even if you did bypass the lock, you still need a, you still need to have access to overcome the uh, mag lock. So in that application, I think a thumb turn would be okay as well. But where there is no mag lock on the door doesn't hurt to have a keyed lock as well um, okay so those are thumb turns another thing to talk about as well about euro cylinders is that they have a well-known at least it should be a well-known at this stage weakness that uh, should everybody who uses one should be aware of and that is for one thing the see where the put the where this hole is here that's where the grub screw grows okay and um, just so you know what I'm talking about just put this key in here it's a little sticky for some reason I'm not sure why So normally the lock will sit in there like that or something and then you see your grub screw goes in there and it holds the, the euro cylinder in there okay now it's all well and good having that um, this design it makes it very easy one of the pros about the design is that it makes it very easy to quickly replace a lock cylinder if you really want to makes it nice and easy but the pro the one of the well-known problems is that this hole as you can see from there it takes a lot of the material that joins the two halves together away so therefore you literally even though this cam is here there's nothing inside of there that's holding those two parts together so literally the only part of this lock that holds two halves together is this weak little thin piece of metal there and here okay so the reason why that's a problem is these locks are very often snapped in half literally broken in half at this joint here by criminals <coughs> and locksmiths actually if a locksmith can't drill up or if the lock is broken sometimes a locksmith has no choice but to break the lock drill it and then snap it off or whatever now yeah the only problem with this is that there is that vulnerability and it takes it's much easier than you think to, to break it it's like Depending on the Euro cylinder, if it's just a standard one without any snap protection like this, it's like breaking a brittle piece of hard plastic, snapping that. Um, 
that's the best way I can kind of describe it. But anyway, if you're able to replace your Euro cylinder um, that has no snap protection, you should. And I'll show you what a, a lock with snap protection looks like. I think this one has snap protection and that's what this thing is. But uh, I'm really not that sure. I'm really not that sure if that is snap protection or not. But anyway, a lock with snap protection. A Euro cylinder with snap protection will look something like. Let's just get get one. to find one here just have to find one here uh, let's, yeah there's this one but that's not very common I'll take these two out for a second okay here's one with snap protection so here's an Abus dimple lock here and you can see it's got these cuts along here, those are sacrificial points and if someone tries to snap the lock and it's in the door this part will break off and the rest will stay in secure. Now you have locks that have further protection along here so if they did snap this part off as well this cam disengages from this side and can only be opened and closed from then on from inside okay so this here it's better than just using a, a regular standard euro cylinder because it at least offers you a chance to defeat a snapping attack okay with this sacrificial point but the main thing is you have to make sure the lock is when it's fitted it's nice and flush like this on your door so there's even less chance of someone grabbing grabbing it in the first place to snap it, okay? You want to have it as flush as possible. So if they break the handle off, yeah, they'll be a bit sticking out like this, but if they snap that off, they can't reach the rest of it. Now, if you want to make this even more secure, you can put security handles on, or security escutcheons, and those will make snapping it even even more difficult because unlike standard door handles they're not easy to break okay and some of them actually have a little plate that goes over with a spinner to help protect the um, the lock as well so that's that um, So you got to make sure your Euro cylinder is well fitted. Here's just a lock that tried to it never took off. That's the only reason why they stopped making them, but it tried to change the design of a Euro cylinder a bit to make that extra that weak spot strong and unbreakable with the snapping attack. You can see they added a lot more material there. Okay, so that's one thing they tried to do to do, to um, stop snapping but the design, the shape never took off because it would require you change like this part as well as the lock so a good idea but it never took off unfortunately so if you don't, again, if you don't use the right Euro cylinder on your lock okay, that's what happens Okay, the criminal comes from outside, ch -ch -ch -ch, that breaks off, they get a screwdriver, bang, pop that side out, that falls into your floor and scratches your floor on the inside, and they just turn the cam with a screwdriver, and the lock is open. Okay, so then that means all that's left is this. Okay, so they have you have your cylinder here bang they snap this off snap this off 
get their screwdriver or whatever. And they just, you know, you can see that there. They just pull it across manually. And bang, they're in your house. So use a secure Euro cylinder. Don't cheap out on it. If you have a new door installed, replace the cylinder with something more secure than a bog standard Euro cylinder. Otherwise, you're asking for a break in. Unless, of course, you have mag locks on your door. But anyway, see ya.